Hi guys, welcome to the Thinking Crypto channel. We have over 40,000 subscribers. We cover the crypto news and interview many of the folks who are building and investing in the crypto asset class. So if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button. Guys, some very bullish news here, very big. U.S. Congressman, Bitcoin is a great store of value. Central bank printing has consequences. So a couple things to unfold here. I think we all recognize Bitcoin as digital gold, a hedge against the money printing, inflation and toxic capitalism around the globe. But we are now seeing people in government positions as this congressman here, and I'll tell you who it is, uh, are recognizing that this new crypto asset class, the different use cases and its growth. So we're talking about U.S. Congressman Warren Davidson. That name may sound familiar to you guys. He's, of course, been very bullish on crypto. He gets the technology, and he has been pushing for crypto regulations from day one. Him and Darren Soto put together the Token Taxonomy Act. Now, he's a Republican. Darren Soto is a Democrat. So we are seeing support from both side, uh, sides of the aisle here, guys, and that's great. We just need more of the congressmen and congresswomen to recognize what is taking place. And we're going to talk a bit more about the hearing they had today about the digital dollar. But Warren Davidson was interviewed and he highlighted uh, what he thinks about Bitcoin and, you know, the, the things that the, uh, central banks are doing. So he says here, I think if you had Bitcoin as your national currency, you would see the lack of flexibility that Bitcoin would provide for a central bank in a situation like this this. I view Bitcoin personally kind of like digital gold versus a true currency. I think it's a great store of value. Big endorsement of Bitcoin from a government, a U.S. congressman, someone part of the government. That's great, guys. That's why I hold Bitcoin in my portfolio. It is not the greatest currency, but it is a hedge. It's digital gold. It has the same principles as gold, uh, but even better that you can move it instantly, digital, obviously, and obviously you can... Uh, uh, it has the fungibility and all that, right? You guys know all the properties. So I don't have to explain that. But Bitcoin is growing. And even in the current situation that we're in now, people are starting to wake up and see, hey, now I get it. Now I get Bitcoin's purpose. Digital goal, a hedge against toxic capitalism and all those things. So you are seeing more folks recognize this. And uh, some other news here in uh, conjunction with this, we are seeing... Uh, more people who are pro crypto are running for office here. So meet the pro Bitcoin anti bit license. I like that Democrat running for state office. And this is, of course, in New York, which has the bit license, which is annoying, which is holding up a lot of crypto exchanges from operating in New York, like uh, Binance and others. Right. It is really uh, stupid. I think the bit license is so stupid. They need to get rid of it. So the guy's name is Patrick Nelson, and he first ran for uh, public office when he was 25, had already founded two nanobiotechnology startups and had a deep appreciation for Bitcoin. So he's running and uh, let's see if he gets it. We need more people who understand this technology, not just crypto, but are forward thinking to understand the technology how, and how it's disrupting our economy and the people who are like, hey, my job's gone and be, that's because of automation or they sent it overseas, right? So people need to be brought up into speed with the technology and we need to adapt to that to grow jobs and so forth right that's just my take on it but i think you guys understand that right um it's it's like the horse and buggy people who had to get on board with hey you know what I can't take care of horses or a, or a cart anymore. I need to go learn how to build cars with Ford, right? You, you gotta, you gotta stay ahead of the curve. You gotta keep yourself marketable and build your skill sets. Um, and the country as a whole has to move forward in that direction. So we're seeing folks like Warren Davidson been calling for regulations like we are gonna get left behind here in the United States if we don't make the move. And he recognizes that. And great statements here around Bitcoin. And this is why I have Bitcoin in my portfolio. I diversify, have Ethereum, XRP, and so forth. I'm looking for what's going to make me money. And Bitcoin is getting a lot of adoption from big money, a lot of financial products being built around it. Big money is doubling down on the uh, mining. There's the world's largest Bitcoin mining farm being built in Texas. So we've covered this on our channel. Also, you're seeing giant tech companies now building on Bitcoin. So Microsoft launches identity platform on Bitcoin mainnet beta testing underway. This is big news. This is Microsoft, guys, the, the giant tech company, right? Microsoft just launched the public beta of its decentralized identity ecosystem, ION, 
on the Bitcoin mainnet. Daniel Buckner, Microsoft's senior program manager for decentralized identity, touted the, the development in a blog post on Wednesday. So on Microsoft's website, it, it's titled here, Ion, booting up the network, and it clearly highlights that they have moved onto Bitcoin's mainnet. So let me give you the details. We are thrilled to see Ion make the leap to Bitcoin mainnet for its public beta. Ion is an open public permissionless layer two network built on open source code that anyone can review, run, and contribute to. From the very start, ION has been developed as a decentralized network designed to operate independently of centralized parties and trusted intermediaries, including Microsoft. ION doesn't rely on special utility tokens, trusted validator nodes, or additional consensus mechanisms. The deterministic progression of Bitcoin's linear block chrono chronology is the only consensus it requires. So look at that, guys. They're building on Bitcoin's mainnet. So I hope you see what's happening here. Institutional money is buying up Bitcoin. You have a lot of Bitcoin financial products being built now. Um, you see that the big money is also investing in the mining. Once again, the world's biggest being built in Texas. Also, Peter Thiel's Layer 1 is there. And Layer 1 is also funded by Gemini, the Winklevoss twins. And they're setting up shop in Texas. And now you have Microsoft building on the Bitcoin mainnet. Bitcoin is going to be successful. It is here to stay. It doesn't matter what your emotions or your feelings tell you. What are the facts? And I'm showing you facts here, guys. That is why I hold Bitcoin in my portfolio, and I hope you guys see that. Um, Ethereum is going to do well. XRP is going to do well. Not everything will do well, but I'm just highlighting the ones that have big use cases, big exposure, and, and are getting adoption. Now, uh, some great news around the infrastructure, the, the on-ramps being built for the growth and maturation of the market. BitPay's prepaid MasterCard launches in the U.S. to make crypto accessible. So BitPay rolls out prepaid MasterCard for U.S. customers, crypto customers, hoping to further drive adoption and purchasing power of crypto holders. So you may say, hey, I don't want to spend my crypto, and I personally don't at this point. But they're not looking right now, and that's what people miss. The point is when the price gets uh, to a point where it, you're – for example, I wouldn't spend my Bitcoin I have right now on anything. I'm keeping it as is because I'm looking to make the most money, right? But when Bitcoin hits uh, like $100,000 or something and you're spending a couple of Satoshis, that becomes nothing, right? It becomes irrelevant because it's so small. And people may think, oh, I don't want to spend 0.2 Bitcoin on this, but you won't be. You'll be spending like satoshis 0. 0.0000 something bitcoin right and that's how you got to think about it guys and that's what's being built these people are preparing for the higher prices and um i certainly think bitcoin can easily hit a hundred thousand in the next parabolic run-up cycle which i believe will take place next year that's just my personal opinion and prediction i could be wrong so i'm not saying that's set in stone so i hope you guys understand i'm looking at the bitcoin having chart and We've seen, um, you know, of course, the bull, bear, and accumulation phases, and we just had the halving in May. So in the last run-up, you know, the halving took place in July 2016. We saw a parabolic run-up in December 2017. So we got over a year to go. Uh, so it's not going to happen next month. But if you look at it from a macro perspective, you get a good understanding of what is taking place here. And I see more investments. I see more people talking about it, more more uh, uh, instruments, finance, financial products and services being built, institutions buying this up. So the demand is there and they're going to market the hell out, out of this to the public. Uh, a lot of the hodlers are not going to spend, but it's going to be the mainstream when they come in. So uh, speaking of Congress, right, they had their meeting again, another virtual, well, I shouldn't say another virtual, but another hearing, it was a virtual, where they talked about the digital dollar being used to provide stimulus payments. And of course, uh, CFTC or former CFTC chairman Chris Giancarlo was there, who's the co-founder of the Digital Dollar Project. And he was telling the, you know, the, the folks there, like, we got to get going here. And you're going to have a much more efficient way of distributing the money if you have a digital dollar. And we, of course, need to make sure we uh, don't get disrupted by China and all that stuff. So he said, I think the sense of immediate urgency has indeed passed. And I think that provides the time for reflection on the important issue. 
what the crisis revealed about the shortcomings in our accounts-based banking system when it comes to di to distribution of benefits and inclusion. I believe that cries a crisis crisis always reveal different things. Uh, so you know, talking about the digital dollar, and in, we we need to. We need to act soon. So he says, unless we act, this coming wave of innovation will put enormous strain on our aged financial system. So we have to, we have to innovate. We have to get up to speed to 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 get up to, to modern day technology and speed up payments and help the unbanked and the um, uh, those who don't have access to proper financials and also the disruption that may be coming from China with their digital yuan. So. This is uh, this is certainly crucial for the U.S. and we see central banks around the globe are trying to build their CBDCs out, and digital currencies are on the radar. Facebook's building its Libra, so this asset class is on the rise, and patience is the key. So, guys, what do you think about this statement from the U.S. Congressman Warren Davidson, and also Microsoft building on Bitcoin's mainnet, which I think is huge, huge news. Uh, leave your thoughts and comments below. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll talk to you all later. Thank <laughs> you.